my name is Liv and welcome back or welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing my June wrap up and we are going to try to get it done before the camera ever overheats. So we're going to be as clear and concise as possible and we're just going to hop right in. So first we're going to start off with some stats. June, I read seven books and only 2,045 pages, which like really isn't bad, but June was just like a month for me and I wanted it to be done. Like <laughs> I just wanted it to be done. I wanted it to be over. My average rating was 4.3, which is I think the highest average rating I have had so far this year. So we will take that. I read two graphic novels and five novels. I read three books from authors that I have read before and four books with new to me authors. I read five horrors and two romance. And then just going down the line, I have my little notebook if you keep seeing me going down. Going down the line, I have one three star, one three and a half star, one four star, one four and a half star, and three five stars. So overall, a pretty successful reading month. We are going to just chat about the books in order from least liked to most liked. So we are going to start with my three star. And that was A Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I had high hopes for this. I gave my best friend's exorcism like four or four and a half stars. And I really loved the concept of this book and the title. And I just felt like that wasn't fully what we got from this book. I really, really enjoyed the first half of this book. And then the second half, I was kind of just like, what? Like, I felt like we lost the concept. And I felt like like, especially like based off of the author's note that Grady Hendrix first gave us, like we kind of lost the point a little bit. This book is set in the early 90s and we span over a few years and we're following Patricia Campbell as she joins this book club with some other wives in her town. It's also set in the same town and like almost same time frame as my best friend's exorcism. So I, I just had such high hopes. But we're following Patricia and her friends as they start this book club because the library one really ain't for them and they wanna read these fun true crime like murder novels together and a newcomer comes to town and one of the ladies is convinced that maybe he's a vampire. I just wanted, like I wanted more woman power. Like it took in the whole freaking book for them to even like work together. And I just like, it wasn't the book that I thought it was gonna be. So it was just a little disappointing but three stars isn't bad. Also, this was the only book in June that I read that wasn't queer. So let's move into the queer stuff. My three and a half star was Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. This book, I am just gonna basically read you the synopsis because it is one paragraph and I feel like it's good to not really go into it knowing much more than that. So one, welcome to the God-fearing community with a heart of gold. Also like take a shot every time this main character says God-fearing. Nestled high up in the mountains is Camp Damascus, the self-proclaimed most effective gay conversion camp in the country. Here, a life free of sin awaits, but the secret behind that success is anything but holy. This is three and a half stars, which not a bad rating at all. I think my biggest thing with it was I was having trouble like visualizing some of the scenes and I could take like a lot of just like generic horror movie scenes that I've seen and kind of place them in there. But I am someone who like I visualize scenes as I'm reading, I don't see words. And I felt like I just had a little bit of disconnect doing that. So that was kind of what brought it to a lower rating. I also now have like a bit of a theory too, because right after I read this, I read this when I had to go down to Maryland for some family stuff and I got home and Jan from Jan Agaton had posted a video where she just read this. And in her video, she was talking about how she was raised really religious, which I am the opposite. My parents didn't want us raised religious, so we didn't do anything at all. And I don't know much about it. I I had like one very religious family in my town that I could kind of relate these people to. But other than that, not a lot of exposure. And Jan was talking about how it was really satirical. And I think since like I didn't have that exposure growing up, like I didn't see that part of the commentary, which like looking back now I can. But at first I was just like, like these are some crazy fucking conversations that are going on in this house. But like from the one family I know that was like this, I was like, yeah, that like I could see that that would make sense. So I think I missed a bit of the satire just because I haven't really been exposed to a life like our main characters. Okay, moving in to my four star. I have The Sacrifice by Rin Chepeco. This is a book following a cursed island called Kisip Mara, which is part of the Philippines, I believe. And there's this kind of young adult who's about 18, and I think they're maybe in the non-binary spectrum, but it never really fully says. He just says that he doesn't really see himself as either, but is 
we're always using he him pronouns and he's kind of like the watcher of this island he doesn't ever really go on it he just fishes around it and keeps an eye on this cursed island a hollywood film crew comes because they want to basically like film their little ghostbusters tv show about this island and they hire our main character alon to be kind of their tour guide but the second the whole film crew shows up on the island a giant sinkhole opens in the middle of it where they're building their cabins to sleep and a giant balete tree with a corpse in it is in the middle of the sinkhole. That's all I'm really gonna tell you on the synopsis of this one. I really enjoyed our main character and his relationship one with his dog, great, adorable, loved it, and two his relationship with one of the like producer's son who's, who's there on the island with them. This was just a really fun ghost story, cursed island story, following like Blair Witch style filming project and that was a really really fun time. It was just a bit predictable but it's YA and I find that that's a case a lot of the time for me now. Every single month I clear off this shelf to put the books here as I finish talking about them and then I don't remember until I'm like three books in. My four and a half star is Bloom by Delilah S. Dawson. I read this for my queer horror reading vlog and I had just a great time with it. In this novel, I'm not gonna tell you much, it's only 200 pages, it's barely above a novella, we are following Ro and Ash as they meet at a farmer's market and we're really following Ro, who she's never really had feelings for a woman before, but she kind of just is immediately infatuated with Ash. And really at the heart of it, it is an obsession story. But what I always say when I'm reading a horror or a thriller is I want you to like build that tension and unease. Like I want to feel it in my chest. I want to feel it in my, like I want to feel it. And this book did this so well where instead of like reading it in one sitting where I could have, I stretched it out over two or three days because I just like wanted to live in the tension it was building. That being said, you just know the direction of the book like from the beginning, which is why it's a four and a half and not a five. The end was pretty predictable, but the journey was such a great time. Okay, moving in to my five stars. I am sure that in the beginning when I said I read two graphic novels and I read two romances this month that you could probably guess what I read, but I read Heartstoppers Volume 4 and Volume 5 for June. These were the only two that I hadn't read yet, so in May I reread the first three to prepare for reading these, and I just like, I forgot how much I love these freaking books, you guys. We went from like really serious to just really freaking cute, and the journey in both of them was such a great time. In the fourth one, we're following characters who are really struggling with mental health, and then also characters who really want to help those characters but don't know how, and my biggest thing for this one is it just did such a great job of depicting when you're a teenager and this is gonna shut off in 16 seconds so I'll be back in a bit. I was so close I only have three left. Okay dog can you go lay down? Okay so as an adult I can fully recognize when I'm having a bad mental health day. I know a lot more now what can trigger my bad mental health days and I can separate them. When you're a teenager, you don't know how to do that yet. And everything, just like every new emotion, every single thing feels like the end of the fucking world because it's the first time you've really experienced this and you don't know what the fuck is happening or how to help. And I just like, my girl Alice, she depicts that so, so well. Like I am just like transported back to high school when reading these. And then this one, obviously there is still we still got mental health stuff going on, but our characters are getting help in this one, so it's not as prevalent. It's still there. And for this one, it's just, you know, when you're a teenager, I say this like I dated in high school and I didn't. You know, when you're a teenager and you get into your first relationship and you are just like so obsessed with each other that you want to be around each other all the time and you're not fully hanging out with all your friends like you always would and like it's just like this person, this person, this person. Obviously for like the first four volumes, we've kind of been going through that with Nick and Charlie. And in this one, like they're just figuring out who they are without each other while still being together, obviously. And it is, it is playtime. It is just so freaking cute. So I love both of these. I think I like this one a little more simply because there is a scene between Nick and his mom when he is kind of, I'm sorry about the squeaking. There's a scene between Nick and his mom where he's kind of like explaining what's going on with Charlie and how he doesn't know how to help. And his mom gives him this really great speech, but we're also like in the novel while she's giving him the speech, 
flicking between all the different couples that we're following throughout this series and seeing the ways that they are helping each other and being supportive of each other without being like, I need to fix you, you know? So just so cute. I cannot wait for volume six. And I know there is a little novella, I think, that takes place after volume five. That's just called Nick and Charlie. So I gotta get my hands on that too. Okay, and then moving into the final five star and the final book we're gonna talk about for June. I have Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Okay, look, I knew that I was gonna love this book. Like I have quite a few books that are just like, I know in my heart of hearts, I am gonna be obsessed with that I just know I'm gonna love and be obsessed with. And I was like, I, like, I need the hardcover. I know that I'm gonna have a great time. I, from page one, you guys, we just like, we just started highlighting that. And can we talk about the highlighting? Like, paired so well but this was just this is probably one of the most beautifully written books that i have read all year like i just i am obsessed okay i forgot to turn the ac off but okay like guys beautifully written an example <clears throat> so sorry i'm like this i used to think there was such a thing as emptiness that there were places in the world one could go and be alone. This, I think, is still true. But the error in my reasoning was to assume that alone was somewhere you could go, rather than somewhere you had to be left. Ah! Like, ah! So good. Just so good. So good. So good. I've been so bugging about this that I haven't even told you what it's about. So let's do that really quick. This book, we are following Miri and Leah. They are married. They are the wives in question. Leah is a marine biologist and she leaves on a three week submarine expedition and she doesn't come home for six months. And when she comes home, she's not the same, okay? Miri's like, who are you? You're not acting like my wife. Leah, when she's holding a conversation, like she's not making eye contact, okay? She's just like looking up at the ceiling and talking about the ocean and she's not fully engaged. She is spending a lot of time in the bathroom with this little sound machine that the company she worked for gave her to help with the decompression sickness. You switch point of view. So you're following Miri in the current timeline, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with her wife. And then you're following Leah in the past timeline, like leaving on the submarine and everything that happens. And I just like, this is so, so good. I would say don't read this book if you don't like slow burns and if you don't like ambiguity. I enjoy both of those things. So <laughs> I loved this book. It built such great tension flipping between the chapters and it really just kept you guessing until the last page. Like I, I didn't know what was gonna happen down there in that little submarine. <laughs> I can tell you it was not what happened, what was revealed, definitely not. I would never have guessed. I could really just like keep going on and on. Like I am just fucking obsessed, babe. Like it's just, it's so good. It is easy to understand why someone might love a person, but far more difficult to push yourself down into that understanding and pull it up to your chin like bedclothes and feel it settling around you as something true. Like it was just written so, so well. I think if you're interested in the concept, but you're not really sure, I think you should read it. I think if you're interested in the concept, but you're not all into that horror, there's a lot of good tension, but there's not any like gory horror anywhere. Like it is much, very, very much just a literary horror. And you're very much just following these two women in their two little timelines. And I just, so good. Do not read it though if you want answers because I don't I, just, I don't have any for you. Okay, and so from least favorite to favorite, these are the seven books that I read in the month of June. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I will see you soon with another video.